Welcome to the final chapter of the Let's Play for Missing Since January, or In Memoriam. We left off on this puzzle in Chutaret, which I thought was quite the doozy. We were looking for the name of the person who discovered the sacred text, and we didn't even know, you know, what the sacred text was, or where it was. But, you always surprise me, in this case it was the SS Neoman, who put together that the message the Phoenix left for us was Nag Hammadi which is an Egyptian village. And the discoverer was a farmer by the name of Muhammad Ali Saman. And he found this less than an hour and a half after I posted, which surprised the heck out of me. So, good job, SS Neo Man. Bonus points for solving the final investigative puzzle of the great work. So I'll just put this in here. Last letter. So solve it. Great work. Giordano was uh, denounced to the Inquisition in Venice by Giovanni Mocenigo, leading to his downfall. On our first night there, we went to the palace where Mocenigo used to live. This was definitely where the phoenix would strike next. We decided to stake out the palace all night long. started preparing for our second stakeout. So here we are in the last uh, puzzle on the CD, Seachet, uh, or Seachet, and it's a two-parter, and both parts are infuriating and nearly impossible. This first one, you have to get the film speed playing in the right direction, at the right size, and to be honest, nobody seems quite sure how to do this. I've checked three different walkthroughs, and they all have three different answers, and all of them were basically, I don't know, it just 
solved itself eventually. Which is basically what I'm going to have to do here. So, unfortunately, we've got another edit point coming up shortly, which is where I'm going to hide basically like the 10 or 15 minutes of me hacking away at this. So I'll see you on the other side. Finally, for no rhyme or reason, the puzzle was solved. So we'll move on to part two of this, which is the final arcade game replica. As you might recognize now, this one is Space Invaders, and is quite possibly the worst version of Space Invaders ever created. This is also quite possibly one of the worst puzzles in the game, bar none in terms of design. The reason being is there is only two checkpoints in this level, and checkpoints one and two are way too far apart. It can literally take half hour, an hour, just to get through this one level. And it has this reticle thing which controls similar to some puzzles in the past where basically I click to trigger both the gun and the jets, as you can see, and if you crash into the sides, you crash into the enemies, you reset back to start, or to the previous checkpoint, which as I said are way too far apart. So once again, there's going to be an edit point coming up soon, so you don't have to sit through all of this. In fact, I might even have to stop recording just to save my hard drive. But I promise we will get there. There will be actual puzzle solving going on in this chapter before the end. <sighs> Alright, so still at checkpoint one. I'm doing this for about mm, 20, 30 minutes now. I stop counting on my timer. Got a good feeling about this run though. We need to move quickly. The the Phoenix is right on top of Jack and Karen and Venice. Alright, we're at checkpoint two, finally. It does get a little bit easier at this point, fortunately. It's just uh, one checkpoint one to checkpoint two stretch that's really, really difficult. And of course, it gives me long sections like this that have zero margin for error. Almost there. Almost there. What is interesting is that um, one method for doing this is basically just to ride the bottom of the screen. If I do nothing, the little figure there will fall back to the bottom but we'll keep coasting up because the screen scrolls at a set speed. Almost there. Come on, come on. Just need to hit these last few. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get clear of these blocks. I think that's the last of the blocks. So it's just straight Space Invaders here on out. And we're clear! And that's all Seashet. Seaget. It had been several days that we'd been eagerly waiting for the next event to happen.
I'm making a note of this just in case. I'm worried. Uh, Karen called me on my mobile ten minutes ago. Uh, she asked me to meet her near the port. I I'm wondering uh, uh, what she could possibly be up to. I, I, I tried to call her back on her mobile, but there was no answer. Maybe I should uh, call the police. Damn it, I, I can't see her anywhere. She was supposed to be waiting for me by the landing stage. Karen! Karen? Karen! So here we are at the end of all things. Let's see what awaits us beyond the great work. And all we're left with now is this white pulsing dot. This is it for the CD. There's nothing else on the CD. If I click the dot, it loads up a website, which is where our end game will take place. So basically the idea behind this is this is a one-on-one uh, -on -one game versus the phoenix where you have to put the symbols into the slots while avoiding both the little armature figure there in the center and the little death signs. And the first person to slot more than the other wins the level. And it's first one to six wins. There's 12 total. Fortunately, it's not terribly difficult, but the Phoenix cheats. The good news is there are little things you can use to assist here. There's that little yellow sun icon that what it does is give you invulnerability. In fact, I'll probably tag it here, like so. That means you can just move the figure straight over the death symbols or whatever without losing your turn. So that's one for us, one for the good guys. We always go first in every round, which gives us an inherent advantage. Of course, his inherent advantage is that he cheats. Like you can see here, he kind of just skipped right over the little arm figure there. So let's see, I'll put this one here. And again, just skipped right over everything. Right. The moon figure, by the way, allows you to um, basically remove one of the pieces in play. 
like one that he puts in. And so you can take it back for yourself. It's a way both he and you can use it to advantage. Fortunately, I'm in the lead right now, so I don't really need many tricks of the trade right now. See, that, that, that's just flagrant cheating right there. The game's not even trying to hide it. Alright, so we're at 3-zip. You know, on the fourth planet. It'd be great if we had a shutout. I, I, I've never even heard of a shutout happening on this. Still leading, though. He's really gonna have to pull this one out. And yet somehow it manages to make it in. Funny how that works. Well, I dispute that, so I'm going to use the moon to knock that one out. So that makes it 4-zip. at 5-zip. Yes, we can. Going for the shutout. Alright. 2-1. to one. Two to two, whoever gets this one in. Ah! Just raise the edge there. Of course he'll get it. There we go. So that's five to one there. Pressure's on. Not a shutout, but I still have a pretty commanding lead at this point. Got one of my planets. Oh, come on, I hadn't even grabbed that one. This looks like he's probably going to take this one too. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so it's 3 to 2 now, or 5 to 2 now, sorry. So far, I have the advantage here. And I think this might do it. This might be it. Yep, this is it. And Gary intervenes. The game is over. We've won. You just to stay online, we'll send you an email. And you're thinking, great, we'll see a cutscene or something. No. This is it. This is the ending. Everything else plays out over email. Um, and some of those emails will include pictures or video clips or whatnot, but that that's it. Nothing else from the CD, nothing else from the website. That's all. It's kind of underwhelming, to be honest. But thanks for your help. Thanks for watching. We'll continue this in the thread with emails and whatnot, and be sure to stay tuned. I'll post an epilogue with everything I get afterwards. So thanks for watching. This is the Let's Play for In Memoriam. Bye, everyone.